Long time no see. Welcome to Chinese Grammar Simplified. For intermediate level Chinese students, you probably noticed that there are three does in Chinese. They are everywhere and it's often confusing to figure out when to use each one. Even some Chinese people, including famous writers, mix them up. Besides being pronounced as da, all of them also have other pronunciations and can serve a variety of functions in Chinese. So I will make a series of videos to break them down for you. As part one of the series, in the next four minutes, this video will focus on how they are used as structural particles. Let's get started. When serving as structural particles, the main function of these does are to connect descriptions to different types of words. The first da is used to connect nouns with their descriptions. In Chinese, it goes description plus da plus noun. The second da and the third da are both used to connect verbs with their descriptions, but in different orders. So the pattern goes description plus da plus verb and verb plus da plus description. The third da can also connect additives with complements, but we will discuss that in another video. With the first da, the description here can be nouns, additives, verbs, or even clauses. When you see noun located both before and after the da, the one before always describes the one after da. Da here almost works like apostrophe s in English. For example, 爸爸的蛋糕 means dad's cake. 今年的蛋糕 means this year's cake. 美国的蛋糕 means America's cake or cake from America. We can also add additives before da. For example, 漂亮的蛋糕 means beautiful cake. 好吃的蛋糕 means delicious cake. With verbs, we might see phrases like 吃的东西. Here, 吃 or eat is the verb to describe 东西, which means things. So, 吃的东西 means things for eating or things to eat. Similarly, 喝的东西 means, you got it, things to drink. Now, things gets a bit complicated when we use a clause as a description for nouns. Let's first think about an English example. In English, you can say things like, Dad likes the cake which mom bought yesterday. In this case, everything after the word which is a clause that is used to describe the word cake. If you take that part away, the remaining sentence, Dad likes the cake, still makes grammatical sense. In the land of grammar snobs, we call this kind of clause used to describe a noun an additive clause, precisely because it works very much like additives. But as I explained earlier, in Chinese, all descriptions for nouns, including additive clauses, will go before the structural particle the. Therefore, you will see the sentence be organized as Dad likes mom yesterday bought the cake. Or in Chinese, 爸爸喜欢妈妈昨天买的蛋糕. Finally, let's move on to the second and the third the. When does serve as structural particles, the description for verbs here is often just an adverb. For example, you can say 高兴的吃. You can also say 吃的高兴. They can be roughly translated as happily eat and eat happily. Although very often these two patterns are interchangeable, the underlying meaning are a little bit different. When using second da, the emotion of happiness is accompanying the action of eating. However, with the third da, the emotion of happiness can be understood as a result of eating. So we can translate the second pattern more accurately as eat to the point of feeling happy. The patterns shown here are pretty straightforward. However, another feature of Chinese adds a little twist to them. When it comes to verbs, instead of using a perfectly sufficient one character verb like most classic Chinese do, contemporary Chinese often use a verb object compound word. When objects come into play, the second dub pattern remains pretty much the same, but the third dub pattern will require an additional verb between the added object and the dub. This addition is tricky and takes practice to get used to for English speakers. So if you want to say Dad happily ate the food, we can say 爸爸高兴的吃饭 or 爸爸吃饭吃得很高兴 As always, 
Here are some practice problems for you to work on. Thank you for watching, and please leave a comment if you find any particular Chinese grammar that confuses you. To learn more about me and for personalized Chinese lessons, reach me at TwinCitiesChineseTutor.us. See you next time.